So thank you for to CWSD for hosting this event and thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, my name is Polly Boardman. I'm with Michael Baker International as the PMO Director of Applied Technologies. And our Applied Technologies practice includes um, GIS, LIDAR, and um, drone services. Um, I have with me today Kranti Bondi, the head of our application development team, and then Alex Wasco, the software developer for this um, product. And um, after I get a little bit, he's going to, uh, Kranti's going to talk a little bit about the architecture, and then um, Alex is going to go into a live demo of the um, application. So just a little background before we start. We were tasked by CWSD to implement a web access system to enable the staff, um, developers, engineering firms, and the public to um, have the ability to utilize h, h models that have already been developed for several drainages in the Carson River watershed. Um, this project is still in process, but we wanted to give you a glimpse of where we're at before we finish and deploy in the next couple months. So our stakeholders include all the counties and CWSD, and we've been working with them, um, you know, to kind of get a feel of what kind of functionality they would like in this tool, what would make their daily lives easier and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, in general, a lot of people need mapping data, but they don't always have a full-fledged geographic information system. Um, so when we first met with them, we wanted to understand the functionality that was needed, what kind of data we should put in there, who has this data, you know, so the first part of the project was a lot of data gathering. So a great solution for this is, um, you know, and Karanti is going to talk a little bit about the architecture so, but we just thought this would be great to have a web application that displays the mapping layers and information upon clicking or querying the layers. Um, this allows the users with various levels of expertise to gather information quickly and to um, trust that the data is accurate. So with the data, after meeting with CWSD in the six counties, we gathered 47 different studies of raster and vector data for inclusion, such as rain gauges, soil types, model input data, model results. Um, the graphic here shows an example of how we track the data requests on our side. And then um, we coordinated with the counties and other consulting firms who had created the LOMARs and ADMPs and other studies. And then we reviewed and processed and now host over 250 layers in total for consumption by the application. This step in the process took quite a bit of time to do QAQC of the data to make sure it's all in the correct projection and able to be rendered in the application. And then this site will be dynamic so we can up upload you know, updates of the studies and, and new studies. We also created a functionality matrix as we started based on stakeholder requests um, in order to pr prioritize the development within JIRA. Um, JIRA is pretty cool. You can kind of just track what processes are in development and move your stories around of what needs um, assistance and so forth before you get going. So this is just a little quick snapshot of what that um, functionality matrix was organized by stories and category and function. Um, so at this time, I'm going to pass it over to Kranti to talk a little bit about the architecture and then we'll do the demo at the end. Thanks, Polly. Um, hi, I'm Kranti. As Polly mentioned, I run the application development team here at Michael Baker. Been with Michael Baker for more than 13 years, and uh, we're very passionate to serving our clients, developing custom application, and CWSD web mapping application is one such custom application we will be talk talking about today. So what you're seeing here is a ESRI high availability architecture Michael Baker International software development team heavily uses ESRI products to host various ESRI applications or team develops customized solutions on RGS Enterprise. To maintain high availability, our infrastructure is configured to handle multiple instances of um, RGS servers. And what you're seeing here is also a recommended approach for ESRI from ESRI to maintain and manage the traffic to the portal. And this design might seem a little bit technical, but it shows how we follow the new market trend to keep all our services up to date and make them available like 99.99% of the time. So there is a live demo that Alex is going to do, but because of the technical difficulties, we are going to switch the demo to the end. So I'm going to quickly talk about the development process that we have done for this project. So here is an agile development process that Michael Baker International follows for our software development, um, software application development. And we use this approach for all projects. And um, in this case, we also use this approach for CWSD. 
for those who are new to agile agile software development refers to a group of software development methodologies they're based on iterative development which uh, where requirements and solutions evolve through collaboration between self-organizing cross-functional teams with over 12 years of experience in agile and scrum michael baker international, michael baker international has successfully procured and delivered various projects for various federal clients and we use the same approach for CWSD. To give a high level overview of this approach, there are different phases, including brainstorming, where we gather requirements by facilitating meeting with various stakeholders. In this case, our stakeholders are Carson City, Lyon County, Churchill County, Story County, Douglas and Alpine counties. We facilitated various meetings with all these stakeholders to capture the requirements. Once we capture the requirements, our next step is to design and prepare a prototype. Polly, our project manager here, has facilitated this step by sending out prototype screenshots to CWSD. Once we get approval, we move on to development where we start building the application. In this phase, our developers will work hard to meet the requirements. Once we build the tool, we do a quick demo to the client, and uh, in this case, CWSD, and get their approval, move through the next step. This is quality assurance. This is where our testers will test for the integrity of the application and provide feedback. If there are any bugs, there will be, they will be reported back to the developers and they can fix them. Once we pass through this step, we then deploy our application to production and we inform the client of all the delivered functions. And we continue to go through this cycle until all the requirements are met. There are some key benefits here um, using this approach, it is definitely increased in productivity where, um, where we follow up with all the clients, like, you know, by empowering the development team to eliminate unnecessary work, identify and remove delays, and uh, it, it will ensure that our team gives the best to our client. Quality, built-in quality is one of the core agile values, and it integrates quality into every step of the development cycle. And the time to market, by aligning cross-functional agile teams, Michael Baker meets customer needs faster. In this step, the framework will help our team and customers achieve autonomy, mastery in unlocking intrinsic motivation. And then we deliver the results to the client. And this is my last slide. And I'll, I'll let Alex continue to do a dive demo of the features which could help all the counties. So I want to emphasize that like, you know, here we are, trying to showcase the importance of using Agile on a day-to-day -day basis to solve complex problems quickly. The slide here shows us different service layers we use to host our web mapping applications, such as CWSD. We, including the CWSD team, Carson City, Michael Baker, were in discussions with SV to see if this service is something that they could provide as a product. And we all collectively agreed that SV did not have custom solution for CWSD. So we design a custom web mapping application, and we also do more complex SD customized solutions, and it needs a place to reside. So our group collectively works with our information security team, our operations team, to host these custom applications in a secured cloud environment, and we use Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services as our cloud service providers. We are invested in serving CWSD, all the stakeholders, including various state and federal clients, and this slide was created to show multiple categories, areas, where we focus on and how we securely host CWSD's data and all our other client services. Um, that, that end my, that's, end, that's my last slide. Um, thank you everyone. If you have any questions, I'll be here to answer them and I'll pass it on to Alex to continue our live demo. So um, originally this demo was um, in two parts. So and I'm going to do both parts in, um, you know, in, in one go here. The first part, though, we're going to focus on the standard web map functionality and interface that's available uh, within the application so far. And then the second part of the demo, we will focus on the customizations that Michael Baker International has implemented so far. Um, so with that, uh, here in this initial screen here, we see um, you know, one of the features within the application. This is the splash screen here, which we can customize. And currently we have you know, CWSD's logo here and, and Michael Baker's logo for now. And um, you know, so we can customize this particular splash screen. Um, 
but now I'm going to focus on, I'm going to go from the upper left hand corner of the application, kind of go around and show you the different um, widgets and what they do. So um, up in, in the upper left hand corner, we have our zoom buttons. Seems pretty standard. Um, but, you know, just wanted to make sure that you saw that these buttons are up here. And also, you know, if you are panning around, you know, maybe you need to pan around and then zoom, or maybe you pan around or zoom in and you need to, um, we have our home button here, our home widget, and we can um, actually get back to our main extent using that home widget. And we also have um, the my location widget here. Uh, if we click this, uh, it should take us to our current location. Here we are. Um, so this could be helpful if you are, you know, at home, if it's um, maybe just a, a landowner that's going to use this site, they might want to just find themselves in the map. They could use that widget for that purpose. We will stop using that widget now, go back to our home extent. We also have these extent um, navigation uh, arrows here, so we can move back and forth through our different extents. If there's a previous one that we want to get to, we can use these to navigate around, go back to our home. Next, we have the search uh, bar up here. We can search in a couple different ways right now. We can search for um, a parcel number, uh, such as the APN for these various counties, but we can also search by address. And I will show you real quick how that works. So right now I'll do the APN search. We can see there's some suggestions there. Um, so we can now click this APN from the suggestions. And then what it, what it does is it highlights that particular parcel and a pop-up opens up with some information for that particular parcel as well. And the other way that we can search is through the um, address search. So I will type in a, an example here. And we again get the suggestions. And so how this works, it'll suggest and then it'll zoom to that particular location, add a dot on the map, and we'll have another uh, pop-up that gives us the information for the address that we typed in. And then we'll go back to the home again. And over in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our scale bar. And we also have the uh, get coordinates widget here. And if we click this, we can click a point on the map and it will give us the coordinates and degrees um, here in this widget down here. Now we will move on to the upper right hand corner of the application. Up here, up here we have our legend widget. And this will just dynamically show whatever layers are turned on or off in the map. Um, some layers are um, scale dependent. So this will dynamically update with whatever is, um, whatever extent is in the map um, and whatever layers automatically turn on and off. And then that leads me to our layer list. And this is where you can't, you have some control over the layers and how they get turned on and off. Um, so if there's a layer that's in like a light gray, um, that means it's outside of its scale dependency. So you'd have to zoom in some more for that to be able to show, for you to be able to turn that on or off. Um, but you can toggle layers on and off through this layer list widget here. Next, we have the draw widget. And with this widget, you can add some markup to the map. And uh, you can draw these different, um, these different shapes. And you can also show uh, measurements, area measurements or perimeter measurements. And uh, that'll show up on your, on your map whenever you draw. And you can clear out these drawings as well. Next up, we have the select widget. And with this widget, we can draw on the map various um, shapes um, or a custom shape if you would like and select different features on the map. So right now we'll activate the select button here and just draw a polygon here. And we can see that we have these various layers that are selectable. And if we, maybe we want to um, export a particular feature that's selected to a CSV file, or maybe we want to pan to it um, or zoom in or flash, we've got just some different options here for things we can do with our features that are selected. Now I'll clear that selection. And then here we have our print widget. And with this widget, you can set a, you can grab whatever sort of layout that you would like. You can set the map title. 
and we'll leave it as the default for now. And um, you can, we want this as a PDF type. You, there's different formats for the exports. So we will actually print the PDF right now. And while this is thinking, I will show you the measurement widget. widget. And this is kind of like the draw, um, but just more specifically for measuring. And you can set the different units for your measurements here. You can do area, area you can do um, distance, um, and it's just a matter of drawing on the map as well. And you can change your units, like I said. So we'll clear that out, see if our map is ready yet. And it is, so now we can open up this PDF. And right now this is just a standard um, layout template, but you can see that this is just, this uh, exports whatever um, map view is available in the extent whenever you do the print. It'll show up here in, in this particular map and you've got your legend and it'll show the layers that are turned on and um, some other basic um, map elements are on this page as well. And uh, last for the standard widgets is the base map gallery widget. And here we can change our base map to whatever we might want. Um, maybe we want imagery in the background, maybe we want streets, um, but the default is the topographic. There are a couple of map features I wanted to go over as well. We have an inset map that is available down here, which will just give you some more context um, based on whatever extent you're on in this main um, web map area. It'll give you a little bit, bit more context down there. Oh, I think I expanded that. I didn't mean to expand that. I want to minimize it. There we go. Uh, so another feature too that I wanted to show is that we've got all of these steady area boundaries and um, whenever, and also there's just with our map here, whenever you click the map, uh, many of the layers have pop-ups set up for them. So you can click a point in the map and then a pop-up will open up with particular information and whatever feature it, it's related to will be highlighted in sort of a light blue, which might be hard to see right now, but it's there, I promise. <laughs> um, but uh, for the studies in particular, I wanted to note that right now, um, you know, we have a pop-up for these studies, but um, some of our studies have HECRAS and flow 2 table data associated with them. And the way that you navigate to that particular data right now is by clicking the study. And then we've got our related tables here and we can um, navigate to that table data um, through the pop-up. And that might be a little bit hard to see right now. I'll show you the, um, just pop-ups in general a little bit closer here in a minute. And with that, uh, now I'm going to move on to our um, the customizations that we've uh, completed so far. So I'm going to show the Select Study widget, which was entirely customized. It's a brand new widget that we've developed and added into the application. And how we can get to that is through the these three horizontal lines in the upper right-hand corner of the application. In this window here, we have our Select Study widget, and we can click this and open that up. And there are two ways that we can add study data to the map. We can either click a study on the map or we can use this list to add studies on into the map. And we have this uh, county drop down, and then we also, which will filter this list that's shown here. Um, but when you first open it, it shows all the counties and all the study data that we have available so far. So I'll show you the two different ways that you can add in the study data. First, I'll do this by adding a study uh, by clicking the map itself. I'm going to click the Alpine Estates Lomer. So as we can see, the Select Study widget automatically closes. Our layer list automatically opens up. And now what we can do, we see our study data right here. And we can toggle layers on and off as we need. Next, I will show you how to add data through the Select Study widget list. So we'll go back to the widget. And now we will use our drop down here. I'll select Carson City. And that filters our available studies based on the studies that intersect that particular area. And it also zoom to that particular area too, just for ease of, of use. Um, and we will click the Eagle Valley study here. And it's a similar sort of workflow. 
um, the select study widget closes and then the layer list opens up and we can again toggle layers on and off as we need. And then last up for the select study widget is the um, remove study data button. And what this really does is it just sort of resets your map um, and uh, it will remove that study data that was added, which was the Eagle Valley. And we can just kind of verify this by going back to our la layer list and we can see now too that, that it, Eagle Valley is no longer in the map. The other customization that we've uh, made so far, I wanted to go over is the, um, the identify study raster values button, um, which can be found here in this layer list widget down here. Right now it's not enabled because we don't have um, specific study data added to the map. So we're going to do that right now. I'm actually gonna do this. Um, I'll do all counties here um, and we will add in sugar loaf. zoom in a little bit to make the pop-up easier to show. So um, now we can toggle on various layers that we want uh, within that study. So we'll do that now. And we can also see too, I wanna to mention that the Identify Study Raster Values button is now something that we can enable or disable. Um, so I'm gonna turn on some layers here. And uh, after the subject layers have been turned on, I'm going to click this button to enable it. And then we can click the map where you wish to obtain a particular value. So we'll just pick a point here. And then as we can see, this pop-up opens up and it gives us the value at that click point for the various layers for that study. And what you can cycle through the different um, values in the pop-up with these little arrows here. And then to disable the, the Identify Study Raster Values button and get back to the native web map um, pop-up click, you just click this button again, the highlight on the button goes away, and now we can click on the map and we'll get our regular pop-ups back. Um, well, and so that's, that's all I really wanted to show for what we've currently done, um, but now you're probably wondering what's next. And um, some of the up upcoming stories uh, will include updating map and study symbology and terminology based on stakeholder feedback, um, accessing reports and downloading them, adding neighborhood data and labels, um, creating a story map for the layperson and just all user types um, for ease of use and um, so that you know, everyone can kind of see how things work, and also um, time series mapping for uh, flood events. And that concludes my demo.